But just Jeff about Bezos. a penny with solace or whatever. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think whistle. I saw that one. Yeah. So like they're starting to adopt this name and I think I'm going to run with it. Um, you know, because I think in, in an interesting way, in a very ironic way, I think it empowers them. You know, I think it makes them feel that, you know, it, it's okay to be normal and work hard, you know, and get better. And, you know, if I can provide that for them, I would love to do that more in the future. You know, um, I'm not exactly sure how, um, but, you know, roll with the punches and see what happens, you know, so. Cool. Yeah. Well it sounds like you have a lot of skills uh, around filming and editing, and I'm sh there's all sorts of other wonderful applications <laughs> for that. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wh what kind of camera do you use? Do you have to have a... Um, I use a... I actually use a camcorder right now, an HD camcorder. Um, and... I, you know, we're going through an upgrading process here as well. I mean, I started with a Canon, um, I believe it's the, the no, yes, I, I started with a Canon PowerShot, which did not have HD in it whatsoever. Um, but I started with that and, and, you know, it was something to start with. And then I upgraded to a Sony CyberShot, um, which is still fantastic and it's still the camera that I use for my on-site vlog so anytime you see me walking that's that's the Sony Cybershot uh, and right now I'm working with a Canon it's the Vixia HF M41 if that makes any <laughs> if that means anything to you but oh. it's, it's an HD camcorder that's what it is um, and I wanted it because um, it it's clear enough. The sound is clear enough that I don't have to buy a separate microphone for it. Ah, I see. Um, but the the one I'm eyeing right now is a DSLR. Um, it's a digital. You know that those like you know those freaking cameras with the right, freaking. Right, you have one of those, right? Yeah. Huh? I have. You two. have one of those. I have two of them. I have a Nikon and a Canon. The Canon 5D yeah. Mark II. Yes, that's. Uh, I believe the ones that the big YouTubers use is the Canon 60D. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that that one is really good for video. Um, so I'm looking into it, but that it also means that I have to get a separate uh, microphone. Um, that It's yeah. a shotgun microphone. That the used. Rode microphone. Yeah, it's the Rode. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, you know, if I use that, then I don't know if I need to also upgrade my lighting to professional lighting equipment, which is also extremely expensive. So what a lot of people do is they just start with natural light. Right. And this you know is what? natural I, light, so, I, you know. I got that circle thing, the reflector. Yeah, the little, um, the circle. Yeah, it's a hu oh. mine's huge, and I have gold yep. and silver. One side's gold, one side's silver, so I use that. Um, there's a bunch of different uh, things that people use on YouTube. Um, they, they use the, the, there's actually like a fluorescent tube. It's like a circle. Oh, yeah, I've seen those too. A yeah. lot of people use that because it lights a lot of your face from the front. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they, a lot of people use sort of um, the typical three-point lighting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. But I mean, in terms of like equipment, it's kind of funny. I mean, I've sort of been a behind the scenes junkie for a long, long time. Um, the Lord of the Rings actually really sparked that for me. I have the special editions of all three of them. <laughs> and I pretty much memorize the behind the scenes. I probably know the behind the scenes more than the actual movie itself. Wow. Um, but I was always completely enchanted by, you know, the, the sets and, and how the cameras worked and how they filmed people and, you know, how the lighting work and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah. I've been well, a junkie really, for a long time. It's, it's very interesting because, we, you know, we were talking about this video that we just filmed. Um, uh, last, you know, of the last uh, t two weeks ago, yeah. and you know, I, I suddenly, it suddenly hit me, and it's what you're saying um, that you know the performers are just like you know the tip of the iceberg, and really the per right. the piece, anything that you do is really all about the people that are part of your production team, yeah. and you're only as good as your production team if you're doing something, or you know what you know as a producer yourself, absolutely, because that's ninety five percent of yeah. 
of what you're doing. And then when we go to the movies and we're like idolizing the movie stars and you know all, all of this stuff, and and there's it, none of that would have looked like anything. You know? Yeah. You know exactly. all the rest of the, all the rest yeah. of this stuff, and I became fascinated. I'm just fascinated because we've been you know working personally with these just great lighting designer, great set designer, great costume, great, yeah. and they are they're deep. I mean, they're really yeah. mm -hmm. like even I mean one of the things like in terms of like lighting specifically, like one of the things that really inspired me from the Lord of the Rings behind the scenes was they were describing how they lighted one of the kind of the, one of the elf queen's eyes, uh, Galadriel, and they, instead of, instead of just doing like normal lights, they actually kind of, they put Christmas lights all over. Mm -hmm. So her, in her eyes, it would be reflected little dots. And it was actually taken from a specific line in the book that was mm -hmm. saying how it, um, you know, it reflected, was this like, like deep wells of wisdom or something like that in her eyes and they actually did that through light and I just was so inspired by that and, and it's so simple yeah. I mean they really took very simple things I mean that yeah. was another thing that really you know um, I mean for theater yes I understand it but but you know what what they were doing the things that they were using some things were su supremely co you know complicated but other things were just you know yeah it's as simple as a cut you know, I mean, like one of the reasons why my videos take so long to make is because it's the difference between 0.1 second of a cut. <laughs> like that can uh, make or break a joke, you know. Uh, that's true. So it's comedic timing, you know, it, it's little things, you know, it's the simplest things, too. It's just a cut. It's not even like a special effect or anything. So, you know, it there's this sort of beautiful balance of simplicity and but artistry at the same time that you find in filmmaking um did, did and you, that's one of the reasons why i fell in love with it did you just learn that part of it how to edit and cut make your cuts and all on your own or did you have anybody to bounce ideas off of really it was just the youtubers i was just watching youtubers and, and that was it seeing how um, they were doing things and comparing yeah i mean one one of the things i found myself doing um was and I realized that pretty much not that many other people do this. Um, I realized I was quite abnormal. And it was that I would watch a YouTuber's video. And if I thought it was fantastic, I would watch like 10 or 20 seconds of it over and over and over. And I would replay it. I've done it for like an hour on just 20 seconds just to basically pretty much like microanalyze everything that they did to make those 10 seconds possible. Mm. And um, I find myself doing this for um, not just, you know, YouTubers videos, but like if there's, um, you know, uh, like a 10 or 20 second clip, like a really great scene from a film, I will also do that mm. just over and over and over. Just watch <laughs> how they act, watch how the lighting works. You know, every, yeah, and I, I find myself doing, I've been doing this for a long time. So I literally studied off of the films themselves. So how, let's connect it back to flute. <laughs> well, that's what we do. I was just thinking, that's what we do with the flute, you know, like hours and hours of two notes and, you know, microscopically exactly. re hearing it over and over. Yep, yep. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I guess you could say it's almost like classical music, um, discipline uh, yeah. has allowed me to do this. Yes. You know, that um, is cool. this is actually, I find to be a somewhat lost art, the, the art of discipline, um, <laughs> which is, you know, to, to kind of do it because right now it's a sort of video game mentality where you beat one level, then you move on. But right. there, you know, it, it's somewhat lost this idea of just, you know, studying a really great piece of art just you know, microanalyzing it as completely deeply as you can in order to really learn learn deeply what what it is, and then you can go and do something else. It's like in Chinese art, right? It's, yes. There's um, the tropes. It's the same thing, but the artist learns from that and becomes a master and goes from there. Or we study Bach and we yeah. we you know mm -hmm. play the piece over and over and over and over again, and each time. 
we become a deeper artist. Exactly. And we and we get better at it. So you would say that your flute approach, you've mm -hmm. applied it now to yeah. finding music with film or music yes. with video to make it yeah. at that, you know, to try to put it at that level. Exactly. I mean, it was kind of beautiful how organically it happened, too. I mean, I didn't go into this with sort of, you know, kind of premeditating that I was going to apply classical music, you know, uh, applications techniques. to yeah. the techniques, right? Like, I didn't because it was so inbred into Yeah, it was just that. normal. For you, that was normal. Yeah, and I think maybe that's what is, you know, attracting the subscribers to my channel is that I'm not, you know, like forcibly applying classical music technique but i'm just being a classical musician you know so and so, and that is you know what just another flutist is for so, so what do you see for yourself with this down the road what do you want what do i want yeah well very concretely um i i would absolutely love to be able to contact my subscribers a little more um, to do more things with them. Um, I want to do, I would love to do some live shows with them. Um, and some of them have actually, when I asked them over the, the webcast, what they wanted to do, they're, they're so, they're great. They, they wanted me to do like a live, um, a live masterclass. They wanted to see oh, me. Teach. Yeah. 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 So they, they want to see me actually in action. Oh, that's right. I think I, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, um, it, it's what do I see myself doing with this? I see myself interacting with my subscribers more, you know, and and I want to reach um, the, you know, because I, I received these slightly, like, actually very heartbreaking messages actually from a, uh, a couple of music students um, on my fifty musical facts tag. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, you might find this comment. It's from a, a girl, I think, in Florida or something like that, where she told me that she is in a music school that's in the middle of nowhere. No festivals go there. She doesn't have the money to go out to, you know, festivals that she hears about and, and you know, and competitions and stuff. Like, she just, there's no resource for her, but there's my channel. So oh. she told, <laughs> yeah, she told me that watching my videos gave her a, a sense of hope that she could, you know, make this passion her career, you know? And if, if I can reach people like that and give them hope, you know, if I could do that more in the future in a more concrete way, um, I, I would absolutely love that. Um, but in terms of what exactly do I do, in a way with YouTube, you just have to ride the wave and see what yeah, happens and see right. what comes around, <laughs> see what yeah, comes around the yep, next uh, corner. Right. Go right. with mm -hmm. the flow, go with the flow. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, at the bottom of it, I, I want to be able to connect more with the subscribers. So, Very yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Wow, Joanna, thank you thank so you. much for joining us this afternoon. Yes, thank thank you, you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you now? You're in, is that Vancouver? No, this is Seattle. Close oh, enough Seattle. to Vancouver. Oh, you know, I might yep. be in Seattle in April. You got to let me know then. <laughs> I'm letting you know. <laughs> we should shoot a video here. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's been such a pleasure to have you. Justanotherflutist.com. Just Another Flutist. Subscribe on YouTube. Just Another Flutist for all her beautiful flute playing. <laughs> we are uh, theflutview.com. If you haven't subscribed to us, like us on Facebook and on Twitter as well talking about flutes. We're signing off. I'm Viviana Guzman. Bye. Bye. Flitter Scooter. Bye. 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 Green Golly. Bye. 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 <laughs>